For now, AI only exists in pixels, living through screens, circuits, and bell jars. But a seed change is underway. The kind of synthetic creature that has a living body with an AI brain is absolutely possible. So now, the floodgates are open. A collaboration between AI specialists in Vermont and biologists in Boston is shifting, even erasing, the boundaries between animal and machine. In the olden days, it was pretty easy. Anything that was soft and squishy was alive, and anything that was sort of metallic and clunky was a machine. But those definitions aren't any good anymore. These clusters of microscopic cells defy all previous definitions. They've been called living robots, the merger of AI and biology. Their creator calls them xenobots because they're made from the skin and heart cells of a xenopus frog. Unlike all of the other creatures, which are the products of evolution, this is a unique type of proto-creature whose evolutionary history took place in a virtual world. And unlike other creatures, they're programmable. A supercomputer designs them from scratch to perform specific tasks. The research team started with a simple ask. I would like a robot that can walk in a straight line. And over millions of examples, it comes up with a good solution to the problem. It would take me a lifetime to build these millions of examples that the computer can run through in a week. Once the AI creates a virtual blueprint, Doug Blackiston has to bring it to life, one cell at a time. I was actually taking orders from an artificial intelligence. I was working for the computer rather than designing things on my own. When I looked down the microscope, it was the first person that ever saw this new life form. You realize you've struck lightning. And all of a sudden, once you know what's possible, the questions just come out of nowhere. And you have uh, thoughts racing through your head about what these could be capable of, what the applications would be, um, exactly what you have on your hands. Once the xenobots are shaped, they operate without any human intervention. Xenobots are completely autonomous. They move on their own. They change direction on their own. They interact with the environment in ways that we neither control nor manipulate in any way. They also heal themselves. So if they undergo some sort of mechanical trauma or damage, they can repair back to the original Xenobot shape. They interact with each other in groups. In the near future, masses of Xenobots could be tasked with cleaning up ocean oil spills. They could travel inside the human body, clearing arteries or delivering cancer-busting drugs. We're currently working on building these out of human cell types. You could create um, living robots out of a patient's own stem cells, so there's huge potential here for biomedical applications downstream. This is really the key to most problems in biomedicine. So birth defects, uh, traumatic injury, aging, degenerative disease, cancer, all of these things could be addressed if we solved one basic puzzle. How do you convince a collective of cells to do a particular um, anatomical outcome? A dish of cells looks harmless, but the implications are profound. How far should we take the xenobots from here? How far away are we from adding a brain? Um, not far at all. Uh, we, we could do it tomorrow. It's a matter of uh, manpower and prioritization. There's nothing preventing that. It's a very easy experiment to co-culture these things with neural cells. And in theory, there's no limit to how big they can get. I mean, there are elephants, and there have been dinosaurs and whales and things. So, so biology can be enormous. So then the floodgates are open, right? So you could imagine creatures that are half AI, half living brains. You could imagine electronic technology that connects multiple brains together. Every possible combination of evolved, designed, electronic, or biological material is a, a viable uh, being that is going to be made at some point, uh, is going to exist. These things will be like nothing we've ever seen before. It is inevitable that we are going to be living side by side with an incredibly large universe of diverse intelligences. 
it is essential for developing a new ethics and for learning to, to live in this new world that we learn to understand what are the motivations, what are the intellectual capacities of these new kinds of minds that are going to exist in these novel bodies that are coming to be.